Hello guys, Nigel here with you, Nigel's Model Bench, and here you are now back with me with part three of this uh, Ravel FA18F Super Hornet build. Um, as you know, this is a build for aimed at sort of newer modelers, not dead beginners, but you know, new, newer modelers um, that may struggle to get this together because there are quite a few issues with it, let's say. So um, I'm going to try and show you in, in a way where you can carve and sand and hack and cut and make the thing go together. So I'm going to start off today by looking at the undercarriage. Now I still haven't glued any of the um, <clears throat> any of the actual parts together. Let's get these instructions out of the way so it doesn't affect the white balance. But basically I haven't glued any of this in yet. It's all still loose because I want to make sure that I can get the undercarriage in <clears throat> without actually that any of this getting in the way. But I think basically um, I had a little chat in a live, in one of Sue's live streams with Tim Scott Borland, who's actually built one of these, and he found that straight away the undercarriage snapped. And I asked him where it actually snapped, and apparently it breaks here. I mean, here's the undercarriage, and when you, I mean, this is just taped together. Everything comes in halves. I'll show you in the instructions. You can see there, it all comes down in here. It all comes in halves. So basically that makes life a little bit easier in some ways for getting some metal in there, but... It all comes in house, but I've just got these taped together with masking tape. And you can see that section there slides up inside that section there. So it'd be easy to get a metal rod in there to strengthen that up. Although I'm not sure we need to, because if you look at this, this is actually quite strong, especially when you consider it's going to have this piece here going in there again. This is just a half, but that's going to go in there like that. This is the problem, when you have everything clipped together, it all just wants to fall apart all the time. But you can't go gluing things together until you know what you're going to do, which is why I'm doing this so you can... Oh, for God's sake, come on. I've done this about 20 times off camera. <laughs> it never falls apart. Bloody thing. Right, so that's going to go in there. Okay, like that. So, And then that's going to support that. So that actual whole leg assembly there itself... I don't think that would have any trouble whatsoever supporting the weight of this kit. The problem is here, where it mounts. And as you can see on this one here, it mounts into the fuselage on, on one point in here. Let me get something to point with. You can see you've got this oval hole here where it goes in, just there. Okay, you've got that oval hole there. And then you've got an, a little leg here on the bulkhead. And basically what happens is the leg comes along and it goes into that oval hole and then back again. I've done this ten times. It's unbelievable this is. <laughs> this is unbelievable. Absolutely ridiculous. Right, just go in. For God's sake. Okay, it's going to go in kind of like that, if you get the general idea. Okay, that's going to go in there like that. Right, so that's going to slip into there like that. And basically, what happens if I put my finger there, you can see all the leverage on this leg is all around that pivot. Okay, I can show you on this one as well. You can see it's all around that pivot. So what we need to do is put something down here through there. I think what I'm thinking is have a piece of brass rod inside this leg that comes through there and then sticks out onto this. And then basically it will be trying to twist the brass rod away. And I think that will work. So what I need to do, and I can see that I can get all the clearance in there and everything because once the sides are on, it's not going to affect it. What I can't do is glue those pieces on. Where are they? Here's one here. I can't glue these on yet because I'm going to have to get inside there to put the brass in. So rather than have the undercarriage legs sticking out throughout the build, what I'll do is you've got this part here that slides out. So you've got this part here that goes into the fuselage, okay, which doesn't want to stay together. Ugh. This is unbelievable. It doesn't want to stay together, but that's going to go into the fuselage in there and sit there like that. Okay. 
if it would only bloody go in there come on Jesus there we go and all, all we'll have sticking out is that and we'll have a brass rod inside there so it'll be nice and strong and I think that's going to help us the other thing you could do if you wanted to if you're not worried about your intakes is drill straight down through and just have a brass rod going straight into your intake there so you just have a straight line going all the way in and then it can't break off um, but I think really this is this is going to be the way to go uh, if we find it's not strong enough like that, then we could always add that brass leg afterwards before we put the side on. So I want to sort of have a look at what we're going to do. Now when we look inside this part, we can see that it's all hollow there, so that's no problem. But here we're going to have to drill it out, or scrape it out, or whatever. And I've got here some 1.5mm brass rod. Now I want to use 1.5 because it's not very flexible. The next size down I've got is 1.2, which would probably be thick enough, but it might just bend and then it will hold the bend. Whereas I think this has got enough strength to just spring back if when I use it. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Um, I'm just looking, I'm not sure I've ever opened this, have I? Yes, I have. So what we'll do, we'll get a piece of this out of the, out of the bag. And we can see that we can put some down in there, no trouble, and we won't put it all the way down because obviously, or we could put it all the way down and then drill that so that that slots over it so that the, the brass goes all the way down into there. So we could do that, that would be a nice little design. Um, but here what I'd like to do is scallop all this plastic away here and put this up through with a bend in it. So what I'm going to do is grab a pair of pliers, this is unprepared. So I'll grab a pair of pliers and I'm going to leave myself a nice length on the end. I can bend that so that that goes inside there and it needs to be bent a little bit more. Okay, so now that is pretty much spot on. A little touch more. And I'm not going to start talking about angles and degrees and stuff because that's not what this is about. This is about improving a plastic model. So I think really the best way to do this is going to be to scrape it out so we can get that in there. Now we're going to have to be quite careful with our scraping because we're going to end up going quite thin. I don't think I can get a drill directly down into there. We may just be able to. Let me see if I can actually clamp this together and drill it out and see what happens. I don't want to glue it together and drill it out because if I glue it together it'll just be a gluey mess in there and then when I drill it it will be really difficult. So let me have a look at what I can do and then I'll come back. There we go, there's an initial shot at it. So you can see I've got the, the brass rod here which is coming straight out the front. It's coming up through the centre of the leg there, well near enough in the centre it needs some fettling. And then basically this this leg here, I've drilled this one out and that will go over that brass rod in there, go into there like that. So now we've got an undercarriage leg, remember we've got a support to go in there, but you can see now that we've got a lot more rigidity in that mounting. And what I'm going to do is actually glue some blocks in here or glue some blocks here so that, that can't actually twist because I've put an angle on it so that when it tries to move you can see it's pulling that brass rod away okay so if I block that there so it can't pull away it's going to be very strong um, when you compare it to this side bearing in mind nothing's glued okay that side it's a lot different so I'll show you now how I do it right first things first this piece here where it angles out because that's going to stop the drill going straight, I'm just going to take a scallop out of there just to allow the drill to go straight in. And then, with the point of my knife, I'm going to scribe a line. In fact, you could use a pointer like this rather than a knife. And I'm just going to scratch a line roughly up the middle. Okay, and this will give my drill a kind of guide, because as you, well, you may not know, but a drill will always follow if there's a hole there, it will always follow what's already there. So if we can just make a small incision down the middle, just like that, and then we'll come along with a knife and just make it a bit deeper. Do the 
same there. As you can probably see, what I've done, I've made a groove here. There's a groove which goes along there, so it's made a small bore. Now this is the tricky bit. I'm going to hold this together. And holding it together means you can't see where the drill's going, so you need to be careful. I can guarantee you that one went perfect. Now the camera's on, this one is going to go completely and utterly pear-shaped. So you can see now why I took some plastic out of there so that I can get the drill to go in straight, otherwise it would have been over here. So we're going to push the drill in and hold it together nice and tight. Just give the drill a couple of turns. This is a one millimetre drill now. And then I can be able to see, by looking here, I can see where the drill is going. And I can see that the drill is, here it's too low, so I was holding it wrongly. And that's why I only did a couple of turns and I'm using a one millimetre drill. Because at this point we can afford to make mistakes. So I'm going to hold it nice and tight. You can see it's trying to pull it apart. Yeah, this is going to need to be taped, I think. Clamped. That's better. Right, so now we can go a bit deeper. And I can look to see that my drill is nice and straight in both planes. And I'm just going to twist the drill around like that without pushing forward just to see what we've got. And you can see here we have a one millimetre bore being drilled in there nice and straight. And then this one's looking much better as well. It's much higher up, so that's better. So again, we'll put these parts together. Just like so. Hold them nice and level. You see the drill is trying to push them apart, and this is what I'm saying. It's holding them and drilling them is a nightmare. You really want something to clamp them, but there's such an awkward shape. There we go, that's probably gone. Yeah, that's gone a little bit high there, that's okay. I'll show you what to do now. And that one there is nigh on perfect. You can see that one there, it's drilled nice and straight. The other thing I'm gonna do is come up from the bottom and drill up from the bottom into there. And what I've done, I've set the drill length so I don't go too far. So what I did before I put this together, before I turn the camera on, I set the length of the drill so that it wouldn't come out of the top. And I need to go a little bit deeper in there, so I'm going to hold these together. And drill them in there. Now this applies to sort of pretty much, oh it's pulling it apart terribly there. This applies, applies to pretty much anything you want to strengthen. And the only reason I'm not gluing this together first, as I said, get a gooey mess. Um, and also because it needs a bent rod to go in there, um, it needs to be sandwiched between the two. Otherwise, I would just drill it, just glue it together with super glue or something, and then drill it. So um, we can see on here that this drill here has wandered off. So what I can do is scrape the bottom away to sort of make it into an oval, so that when I put a bigger drill in, it will follow what I scrape away. And this one here, you can see, is spot on. Just a little bit of a twist at the end there. Just open that out. Okay, so now we're good to go. So we can go from a 1mm drill now up to a 1.2. Okay, and again, I'm going to set the length. So that I don't come through the top. And now what I'm going to do is drill the bottom first and then I'll feel when I hit that when I'm at the top. So we can hold that together. Just drill up through until that drill comes level with the end there. I know I've gone far enough. You can see then we've got a drill up, up in there. Now we can come in from here. Just gently drill without pushing too hard. Just let the drill do the work. Make sure the parts are staying level. Pull 
little part of a quick look. Yeah, it's all looking good. You can see that one there is bloody perfect. That's unusual when the camera's on. That one there is perfect. So I'm going to go a little bit deeper. And that should do us. Now with this front, I'm going to hold this front together nice and tight and drill it again. To make sure we've got a 1.2 hole there, not, not a 1mm because it's all just pushed it apart as I've drilled it. And there we go. And that is basically it. And all you've got to do is keep doing that until you get the... Uh, See this one's still wanting to push off a bit, but that's okay, it's not a problem because we're still only on the 1.2 drill. And the other thing is this area down here is going to have to be carved away anyway. And I'll show you why in a second. Okay, so that's that's not an issue. So now we're going to go up to a 1.4. Again, I'm going to set the depth. Just like so, tighten up the chuck. Just check, yep, we're okay on the depth. Put these parts together. It'd be nicer if they had some nice location pins and stuff on them, but they, they haven't. In fact, we've even got a bit of flash there, a bit of sprue nib holding the bits apart. Looks like there should be a pin there. There's a hole on one side, but no pin on the other. So, right. So we'll hold those together nice and straight, like so. And come in from the bottom and drill out 1.4. And then we can come in the front. Go a little bit steady feeling where the, what the drill's doing because we're getting close to the finish size now we don't want to go pushing anything off it doesn't matter if you come out the side because it's all going to be wanged in there with super glue anyway and then if you do come out the side you can just sand the super glue to shape and that'll be like your filler okay so there's our 1.4 drill gone through there okay so that's that and then finally oops, throwing the drills across the room Finally, 1.6. Now remember, I've got 1.5 rod, but a little bit of clearance gives us a little bit of error, and it also gives the glue somewhere to go. Remember, I've told you this before if you're drilling, if you're putting brass rod in something, always draw the hole a bit bigger if you can, and then it gives the glue somewhere to go. Otherwise, if you have a 1.4 hole and a 1.4 rod, there's obviously nowhere for the glue to go. It's a tight fit, you need to get some clearance down the side. So we can. Drill that out now to 1.6, just like that, job done, and then put this together, just like so, and then hope for the best. Just keep squeezing until the drill becomes all nice and loose. Wipe the swarf off. And then we can get our brass rod and check that it will go in. And as you can see, even though, even though that's a 1.6 hole, it won't go in because it's pulling it apart as I'm drilling it, so therefore the actual hole is smaller. We want to make sure we've got a nice sliding fit, otherwise our parts will never go together when the brass rod is in there. There we go. So that slides in there now, it will slide up under there. Absolutely fine. So, you can look at that and we can see that everything's all nice and square. We've got the holes down the middle everywhere. That's all good. Now I'm going to carve away the plastic on the inside because when we bend the rod we'll have a radius. 
we need to make sure we've got clearance for that radius to go into. So we just scrape that away. Just like so. Do the same on this one. Cut that away like that. Just like so. That's it. Now I'm going to get my brass rod and I'm going to put an angle in it and I'm going to get it about the same as this one was so we can always cut it to length. So what I'll do, I'll use the cut end. When you cut the brass rod you end up making a mess of the end. It's always good just to give it a bit of a clean up so we'll, have, we'll bend it about there. Okay I think I've gone too far. Yes, I've gone too far, so we'll just open it up a bit. Okay, that's what lines up in there. Look at that, it's gone a little bit. No, I think that's spot on actually. A little tiny bit more, just absolutely nothing. And now our brass part should fit inside our leg and we should be able to hold it all together. There we go. You see, we've got a bit of a gap here. That might be where I haven't cleaned enough of the plastic away, where the radius is, or it might just need redrilling. But if you look in there, you can see because we've got the radius there, we need to clear plastic away to allow that to slit in. I can see it's sitting on there, I think. So we just cut that away there. Because remember, you've got a drilled hole and a drilled hole. And in between is raised lumps, so you need to make sure it's all flat so that the radius of the rod can lay in there. Just like so, and then get that one like that. And there we go, you can see already the gap is much smaller when I squeeze it together. So it's just a case now of fettling and getting it to fit. And I'm going to cut the end of this off. I'm going to mark the brass rod that with the pliers and then I'm going to cut it off a couple of millimeters less that one, a couple, yeah a couple of millimeters less okay and then got that like that now and then we can file the end like so we can make that into a point it'll make it easier to put into the next part and with this one we grab our tea hoop, lean out the bench with this one, come back in with a one millimetre drill. Again, we're going to set the length so that we don't come through the bottom, just like so. And then again, hold that together nice and tightly, make sure it's all lined up. And then there's already a hole there, moulded into the plastic, so you can just gently drill down through there. And this is, I don't think this is necessary, but it's just something I wanted to do just to integrate the leg and make the leg itself stronger. Uh, and then I'm going to go 1.2. Again, set the depth so we don't go through the bottom. Hold it together. And just drill it out. There we go. Hold it together, go in again. As the drill's going in, it's pushing the parts apart. And then we can go in with a 1.4. And I think you get the idea. So I'm going to get this done, get it together, and then I'll be back. Right, so now we've got that all done, all the cleanups done and everything. And we need to put an angle on the front so that it comes straight out. So I'm looking at it like this. And I can see that where that 
angle is, I think it's better to do it on this one actually, where the angle is here where it steers round, we need to grab it with a pair of pliers. Okay, and then just move it down a touch. Make sure it's nice and square in there. And then I'm just going to bend it round and make sure I go the right way. So I'm going this way, yeah. So I'm going to bend it. I'm just going to check once again, double check my bend point is correct. Not happy with that. Move it down a touch. The best thing to do actually is to mark it. So what we'll do is we'll mark it with a pen and then we know to the right of the pen is where we want to bend it. Right, so we're going to go so we are going that way yeah so we need to bend that that way so we'll hold that down on the bench and then bend we'll look to see if it's right angles looks roughly correct we go we can put that together like that now we can see I've bent it a little bit too far so I'm going to come back oh just go in there please come on right So there we have our leg together. I can hold it together with my fingers. We've got the rod coming out the front. This will slot up inside there, no problem at all. So now we've got a drill a hole. We can see this roughly, it's just a little bit inboard of center. So now we've got a drill a hole so we can slot it through the same as we did with that one. So all I'm gonna do is, which side was it of center now? What I should do is just bloody tape this together, isn't it, rather than have it keep falling apart on me. There we go, that's the lower leg fitted. That just slides on over the brass rod. So that all goes together absolutely fine. And then we've got the, well this is all taped together now, it makes it much easier to play with. And then we can just slot that in there. Now in here you can see I've drilled like a three millimetre hole to give it plenty of clearance to make it easy to assemble. Um, we could always cover this with super glue actually and fill up the gap around it but I just want to make it so it's easy to get in because you basically have to push the front in like so into that oval hole and then push the back in like so so the front goes in and then the back of the leg is going to slot in I'm not sure the front's gone in has it and then the back's got a slot into that gap there, I think I've got some tape in the way, haven't I? There we go, that's gone in now. So as we can see now, we have a pair of fairly strong undercarriage legs. These, this one isn't taped together. And as you can see, we don't have the diagonal support in there. I'll just put some tape around that one. But um, hopefully now you can see that even without fixing the brass at the front, we have made the undercarriage much much stronger so that'll slip in there like that okay and as you can see the legs nothing is glued and we have strong undercarriage and once we've got that diagonal which goes from like there to there you can see the flex we've got in there will be gone and all of the movement will be up there so um yeah i mean if we put it on a 
a sanding, or maybe a sanding stick on it because a sponge will flex. I'll put it on this box. If we put it on that box and I rest the box on those two legs at that point, you can see it's quite rigid. The flex at the moment is all on those legs. So there we are. Now I don't think I don't think these are going to be a weak point, but what we might do is put a brass rod inside those as well. We should see. Um, but uh, yeah, happy with that. So what we need to do now is when we when we get all this together, we'll leave these leave this panel off here. As you can see, that panel will give us access into that area down in there. So we can put those upper legs in after we've got the, the wheelbase painted and everything. Put those upper legs in, get them glued in. We'll get this brass rod bent round and blocked up on something. I need to take some material off the end of that, so I'll just mark it quickly. Just mark it so it's the same length as this one, just to keep it looking nice for you guys. And then, um, in fact, we'll do that now just to show easy it comes apart and goes together. Take that brass off of there, there we are. And then that will go in the hole. He says, go on in the hole. And then that's going to go in like that. And then that back section is just going to clip in there like so. And there we go. You can see we have a slightly different angle on this one. You could bend them about and we're getting the same whatever. But uh, as we say, there you go. No glue and all nice and strong. So let's start looking at getting these panels on now. I can't remember if I mentioned it or not, but one of the things we need to do here is if you are building this model with me, we won't glue those panels on because what we're going to do is we're going to fit these legs because as you can see, what's what's happening, the leverage it wants to pull these up. So what we're going to do is cut these legs down. We're going to put some wedges in here. We're going to actually wedge it up so that this brass rod can't move, but we can't do that until we actually get the legs in. So we can't do all that and then slide it out because as you can see, when we slide it out, the brass needs to move around. So you can't actually have the brass all located in place and get the leg out, it won't come out. And if you do, we, you won't get it back in. So what we're gonna do is get all this done, get all this fill around here done. As you remember I said, we're gonna cut this belly off so we can pull the belly back. And then we're gonna um, spray all the intakes and everything, get them all nice and glossy. And then we can glue all the back of the body back to the back of the fuselage back together. We'll have these intakes here all smooth out and lovely and everything will be nice. So I'm basically completely changing the builds process, but we're going to end up with a model that's undercarriage doesn't break. And we're going to have lovely seams around here and we're going to have lovely seams around here and everything's going to be really, really nice. And if you watch Clive's channel, if you haven't seen Clive's modeling channel, go and have a look. I think it's called Clive's modeling bench. Um, You'll see he's commented on the um, on the last review video I did. Uh, he's also building one of these, and he reckons because he knows a lot about F18s. He reckons this is much nicer than the trumpeter kit. He calls the trumpeter kit a toy compared to this. So there we go. I think the surface detail is stunning, and I really like the plastic as well. So I think Ravella done a great job here. Um, it just needs work, and uh, I kind of enjoy that sometimes. Right, so going back to the manual, if you remember, just to jog your memory, um, it says down here these central bulkhead pieces, which are these here. Oh, that's a Every time I put the camera on, people start barking, or people dogs start barking. Right, so central bulkhead there, if you remember, it said remove those. I didn't want to do that, so I found a way around it. We've glued all that together, we've glued it all in, it's all in nicely, and everything's all good. Now we're coming over the page and it's telling us to glue these side bulkhead parts in here, which we've done. So we glued those side bulkhead parts in and now we're going to move on to fitting this belly pan. And then it tells you to glue those pieces back on that I actually cut off. Well, I haven't cut them off. If you remember, I made a cut in this panel here so that I can actually slide it over. So rather than have to do that, what we're going to do is, is just put it together like this. And we're going to glue this front section in and then let the... Let the rear section come away after I cut it up here. I'm going to leave it all together and that be while we glue it so that we know it all stays nice and square and everything. So what we need to do first of all is get some glue and glue this belly pan in here just along these lips here. I'm going to use my Mr. Cement S purely because it's a nice big brush and we'll get plenty of cement in there. 
will get it all to go round and it will capillary round and get a nice strong joint for us. Just like so. Okay, so that's all in position like that. You've got the grooves here lined up here and here. Okay, so we know we're all good and everything is going to be good. And what we can do here is where we've got that piece going in there, we will actually glue that in. Remember, I made a big fuss about having that lining up, so we're going to have that glued in just like that, nice and solid. Now, I'm not going to glue anything up here yet. In fact, yes, I will. I will glue these bits here, and then I will put a bulldog clip on them. In fact, I will put a bulldog clip on them first. Where is a bulldog clip? There's one, there's two, I want two small ones, please. Where's another small one? There's one there. We should be able to clamp those. You know my thing about clamping before gluing. I can't, I can't do that. So we'll have to use some of the Mr. Cement SP, which is quick setting. So we'll put that in there, let that capillary down, and hold it. Because in here we don't want. You can see down here we've got a gap. I don't want a gap. Can just brush that down there also put some under the front that should hold that in place for us and then on this side put some in there and it doesn't seem to want to stay so I may have to get the big clamps out and clamp it through there which means leaving it to dry again Seems everything I pick up I end up spending most of my time waiting for things to dry. There we go. <clears throat> if I slide that one in there I can use this to actually push the other side down as well. There we go, that is actually pushing against there and clamping that down, so that's cool. And I've noticed I've got glue oozing out. This is why I never clamp after gluing, but I did just then. So to get rid of that, I'll come on with the glue brush and just take that oozed glue out of that gap. You can see it's not actually holding it, so I think I'll try and slide a clamp in there. It doesn't want to stay. There we go. Again, we've got oozing in there, so get rid of that. There we are. So that's that all glued in place. And then what we'll do is we'll slice it off here. And we'll pull the back of it off and just leave this front section on. And that way, if you remember, I can get in and paint my exhaust, my intake, sorry. And also then we can get in and do some work with the wheelbase because we've got some filler work to do in there. So it's all coming together. Right, so now that's glued on. Um, I've actually been doing a bit of drilling. I broke, I broke one of these rods off again. So, uh, put a bit of brass rod in there and repaired that. So, um, that's glued around the front now, so that can all set and everything. Now, I have had a quick mock up and checked the fuselage, and this is roughly correct. So, basically, now we can get on and fit these. Now, these little panels here go onto these intakes and if you remember in part two I showed you if you haven't seen part two go and have a look there's a lot of work required on here to get these to fit nicely you need to remove plastic here here and here all in there and then they will fit beautifully um, as you can see the actual overall external shapes of this model are gorgeous because it once you once you remove some plastic it fits perfectly but until you do that it doesn't so it's just a case of the wedges were in the wrong place sort of thing um, you know rather than the actual part is misshapen or anything so what we can do now is glue this into position and I'm going to start up here and I'm going to get this nice to fit nicely into there get some glue I'm using extra thin quick setting but only in this area and I just want that to just 
stick itself in and I'm going to use some ordinary extra thin down here now I'm holding I'm holding that central fuselage area in fact I'm not going to glue this yet because what we'll do is we'll let that all move around to fit in with everything else so we just glue that back edge in and we'll do the same on the other side slot that into there get that in see I've got a little bit of a burr on there I'm just going to get rid of easier to do it now than when it's all in we'll get that in there just like so get some extra thin quick setting in there just to sort of tack that in and this is for me this is kind of the way to go with all of this it's okay to just put it all in and then fill and sand afterwards but sometimes it's a lot more pleasing and it's a lot nicer job to make the part fit and I know there's a million people that are going to say you shouldn't have to do that well no you shouldn't but I enjoy this you wouldn't get this with Tamiya that would fit perfectly first time you could basically put it on with your eyes closed dab dab with a cut a bit of extra then move on I enjoy this more I find this a lot more pleasurable and at the, when you get a nice end result out of it you feel like you've really done some work you really sort of you know you produce that rather than it just being a beautiful kit so there we go right so you can see that's gonna have to be pinned over but if I do that now it's gonna move that so we'll just get one bit at a time glued in and let it go solid I'm just gonna have a quick look a minute Yeah, you see that's going to have to come in to fit there but we can it's no problem filling there because it's underneath and everything there's no no issue with that it's much easier to fill that than it is to fill this and get all this out of here so you can see it will move and pull over so we'll just glue that end and leave this all loose i do just want to get it nice and flush there we are and I think what I might do is just put some ordinary extra thin in behind there because I don't like quick setting I don't think it okay so I don't know where we got to there but the battery ran out on the camera so I uh, just changed the battery um, that's one of the other problems with the CV1. They will tell you that it charges while it's filming. It doesn't. Okay. Um, it's plugged into the computer. It's on PC remote so I can look at what you're seeing. And while it's doing that mode, it does not charge while it's, while it's running. And somebody said if you connect it to the USB-C, it will or something. So I got a converter and it doesn't work either. So it does not charge while it's recording. It may well charge while it's... Um, streaming but it doesn't start charge while it's recording so that's another pain in the ass with it um so anyway um there we go i don't even i don't care if it doesn't charge while it's recording i just wish it would use the power supply from the computer to run rather than you know i guess it can't feed the film back out and get the charge through and everything at the same time i don't know an iphone can although an iphone you can't watch can you oh, i don't know right anyway so there we go um What's next? Well, let that dry before we start pulling it all about, otherwise it's just going to dislodge everything. But what I said, I did say I'm going to put some extra thin in there because I don't like quick setting. It doesn't glue very well. So I've put some extra thin in behind and then we can let that go off and then we can be blending all that in uh, because there's, there's panel lines in there, but there's no rivet detail or anything. So we can get in there and sand to our heart's content, get that all nicely blended out. But as I was saying just now, I've, I've, I've removed loads of plastic from there to get that to fit in there nicely like that and it does fit beautifully once you do the little bit of work so and you can see they fit on here as well they fit in around this fuselage piece here they fit absolutely beautifully so the next thing to look at is the sides now obviously I've got these rubber bands in the way these are going to go on something like 
that. Okay, and they're going to slot into there. And you can see straight away that we've got quite a gap down the side. So what we're going to do, I think, is put some plastic card in there rather than... But again, you see, I need to pull that over to get that to fit in there nicely. And you can see it all fits lovely, but we have got a bit of a gap down the side of there. So um, what we'll do is let this dry so I can pull that over and let this dry so I can take the rubber bands off and then we'll get the side to go on. So lots and lots of work to do. Lots and lots of fun though. God, I enjoy stuff like this. Right. I need to get a stronger rubber band on there as well. So I fitted this, I fitted a nice strong rubber band to keep that bulkhead in there. And this is all lined up. That's still not strong enough actually. It's going to have to go even more. So I'm going to have to go another rip on that because what you want is to be held together. And you can see that when I push that together, you can see it's still. And you want it to be held up nice and tight because that's how it's going to be when it's glued. And you want to get all this panel work lined up in its final position, not when it's all flopping around. Right, so with that bulkhead held down in there nice and tight with that rubber band and this panel slip behind, I've lined up that panel line there, which as you know is what I use as my little datum. Got some tape on her just to keep it in place. And you can see that seam is perfect. When that's glued, a couple of swipes of sand and stick, job done. It may not even need any filler. It is perfect, that joint. So that's really nice. I keep catching these bloody supports. I wish they'd make those as separate parts. Um, right, so then, basically that can go on like that. And I've also noticed I was going to put some plastic card in here because there's a gap down in there. But if you give that a squeeze, it all closes up. So we are now at the point where we can actually fit all this up. But I want to tape it. But the trouble is if I tape it, the, the glue is going to get under the tape. So what I'm tempted to do is just pull that away from there. Scrape a little bit of paint off of there. Scrape some paint off of the side. There is none there, so that's cool. We'll just do it on this side while we've got this all off, because it's easier to do like that. Right, so now, we can glue all this together. And I think I'll start by gluing that corner there. So we'll glue these two pieces together. And then the intake will have to fit inside because of all the work we did earlier with this, you can see how nice we've got the fit in there. So, well worth doing, guys. I'm going to put some extra thin in there. Okay, and that can hold that together. And I'm going to put some extra thin in here. And then we'll just hold that together for a minute. like so. And I'm going to grab some 10 millimeter tape and if I can tape it together. And there we go. So that's in there lovely and we can see that when we put this panel in you can see that if we pinch pinch the bottom together like I said it all comes together so really really nice so we can what we'll do is we'll take this panel in place and glue all that and then we can take this panel out to do our undercarriage and now I'm just going to check I think I'm sure is that the right side Sure we can get this together yeah so that's okay so what we'll do when that's dry we will pinch it all together and glue it what i'm going to do is now put this other side on and do the same gluing it here just playing with this undercarriage some more while this glue's all dry in here i've put some tape across here to stop me hitting those rods um i've shortened these brass rods a bit because um they were basically fouling and stopping these from going down 
So what I've done is shorten them and what I've noticed is if I measure the depth and I glue a plastic block to the back of this then if you can imagine my finger is where that plate is I can still get this out and in Okay, slide it and glue it in place and it will be wedged in between there so we may be able to get away with putting the undercarriage in after rather than having it in there now because um you know it's going to be a pain in the ass it's going to get in the way especially when you've got to do all this sanding and stuff around here so um yeah that might be a plan so we might actually put a a plastic block on the back of there with like a ramp on it so we can sort of slide that in we could do all the rubber bands first and get that to slide in perhaps sand that nice and smooth on there so that we've got a nice um you know a nice chamfer on it or something so that it will slide nicely against the the plate and then just slightly put some glue on it chuck it in job done and um that'll be that so hmm, interesting so moving on we, we're letting this glue dry on here now i'm going to leave that for a good 12 hours because i want it absolutely solid because i don't want it to split open and then we're going to get all this band banded up we're going to cut this panel out of here uh, we're going to get all this sorry we're going to get all this glued up here first and then once we've got it all done because this is our alignment for this for this side and then once we've got all that done then we can um, get this panel off and then we can get our intakes painted once all this is done and it'll all be looking lovely so there we go this is my mental change of plan for the build sequence but uh, you may think I'm mental but I'll show you that it can be done it can be done I know it I know it can be done it's a big old model this as well look at the size of it look at that Right, leave that to dry, I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, I'm not. I'm back, it's not 12 hours, but I can't bloody resist this thing, I just have to keep pushing forward with it. And um, I, I'm, it's been about two hours, so I'm thinking that glue will be probably hard enough just to hold those in place for now. What I want to do now is start getting all this glued around here. Um, I know this joint here is going to be okay, that's probably been four hours, that's there, so that's going to be all good. So um, we can go on and get, the, get some glue down in here. Sorry, cement. I got told off once for calling it glue. <laughs> um, so we can get some cement down in there and we can get all this clamped into here because I know that if I clamp these together, like for example, I don't know if I can get a close peg in there. No. Don't know quite how I'm going to clamp this. I could clamp that into there, I suppose. And then get another one. onto there like that there we go piggyback <laughs> so we could do that and I know that if I do that then this piece will still fit in there beautifully in fact it's a little bit tight but that's not a problem that side there doesn't want to pull in so much okay <clears throat> so we'll glue one side first I think so if we glue if we clamp that into there does this all square up what we're looking for is if it's squared up on here does it fit nicely there and as you can see it's slightly out so if I fit this in here so I get this line here get a lovely joint there that does want to come across, but I'm thinking Yeah, I think we're good to go with that it Might be better to clamp If I use one of my reverse clothes pegs That'll fit in the gap, won't it? What I'm looking at guys is if this is square up against here, how does this all fit? That's the main thing. Okay, if I put a clamp in there and clamp that, it's all good isn't it? Right, so what I'm going to do, 
I'm going to use my Mr. Cement S and I'm going to put some glue down in there. that will capillary down in and then I can put a clothes peg and make sure that the gap in the clothes peg is over the cemented joint and then we won't get any glue running under the peg. I can just quickly check fit that piece there and we can see that fits beautifully although it is slightly out at the back. So what I want to do is pull that over Double peg it like that. It's yeah, it's not good. Do 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 do. Let me turn the camera off and then I'll come back and tell you what I've done to sort it out. Right. So what I've discovered is we need to sort of be halfway. If I clamp everything up like that, I've done this side. If I clamp everything up that it's too small, if I leave it alone it's too wide. So I've got a bit of 20 thousand plastic card and what I've done is cut a strip and I've put it down behind there in the gap and then clamped it and let the glue go off. And then I've cut a strip in here, you can see there's a piece of plastic card in there. Okay, and if I clamp that all up, if I put a clamp on here and then I put a clamp on there, I can clamp that all up. And what it's doing, it's actually distorting this piece. So what I'm going to do is put this piece, this piece even in. Okay, and I'm gonna have it nice and square across the back edge. So I can get it held in nice and tight. Like so. And then, we can put the piece of tape, in fact what we'll do is put the piece of tape down the side, pull that over, pull that over and tape it all together. So I've actually got this piece taped in but it's not glued but all of this is going to set with that in position and that is now in the right position. Another piece on there just to make sure. Okay so now you can see we've got a lovely seam there, a lovely seam there We've got a nice and straight and parallel seam at the back and everything's good. Now we still haven't actually really glued all of this together so what I'm going to have to do is run some super glue in there I think to um, to get it to stick. You can see here I could, I, I could have put plastic card in there in the end in that gap but uh, not to worry. What we'll do is get some super glue run in there and then we'll get some filler in. What I might actually do is once that panel's taken off I can run some super glue in, in behind there and in, in down there. And that will do that job, so that will be cool. Um, so I'm going to do the same on this side now. I'm not, I don't know, I haven't tried fitting this side. So again, with it nice and square at the back, actually this one looks like it's going to be the same. So we'll do the outside first. So I'm looking at the fit on the outside. In fact, if I put a peg on there and clamp that, it looks like... Yeah, it's a perfect fit. So I can just glue that one with no shim in it. Make sure the peg has got the radius part away from the glue joint so the glue doesn't capillary under the under the peg. And that'll run down in that joint now. So that'll be cool. Um, and then we can put this on top and check the fit again. And we're all good there. That's fitting lovely. Okay, now this one's going to be pulled over. And I think that's going to want a bit of shim again, so I'm going to cut a little piece of plastic card. Remember, I did remove some plastic from that part, but I didn't remove any plastic from where it butts up, so it just shows how far out it was. So we can slide that into there. Just like so, give that a little nudge down in. So I can 
to sit that in there. Now if I put this piece in now, and I pull that across, as you can see it's a little bit of a gap there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take that plastic card out, move it a little bit further back. That's better. So what we can do now, what I'll do is take this plastic card out, if I can get it out. Come on, out you come. And I'm going to scrape. Because it, it's not 10 thou, it's like I need something like 15 thou. So I'm just going to scrape some plastic away from that. Fit that into that gap. Just like so. And then we can get some glue in there. Let the glue go to work. Okay, and then you can grab some masking tape. We can tape this panel in nice and square on the back edge. And then we can put a piece of tape over the top. And we'll take the inside of there first, pull that together. Take down there, and that will all now. Whoops! That will all now set in that position. And as you can see now, we've got some very clean lines inside there, without glue oozing out everywhere and messing up everything. I've also noticed these plates here sit a bit high, so we're going to have to thin those down. There's like a step up from that down to that one, so we we'll have to thin those down and get those to fit a bit lower. But there we go. So everything is good. Obviously, we're not going to glue anything there. We're not going to glue anything here. We're going to cut this off, take that section out once all this is dry. Um, and that basically, my friends, is that. I'm not going to glue anything back here because I'm going to pull these panels apart so I can get my airbrush in there and spray around the uh, intakes. And we're good to go. So there we are. What we could do here is just run, in fact I'll get my Tamiya extra thin because the brush is smaller. Should be able to run some glue into that joint, a little capillary around. The same here. Same in there. The more weld action we can get, the better. I mean, super glue is great, but it can just crack on you. You've got to be really careful. If you can hear a rumbling noise, it's my stomach. I'm hungry. There we are. And that's... Who said this kit doesn't fit together? Look at that. Hey, look at that fit there. It's lovely. Nothing wrong with that. So it all just squeezes together and... All the gaps close up. I mean, that seam there is perfect. That seam there is perfect. Really nice little model, if you take your time, I think. I just hope I don't have to eat my words. I probably shouldn't have said that, should I, guys? Right. So I'm going to let that go off. And then, when that's gone off, I'll show you how I'm going to fill it and everything. And uh, we'll go from there. I'm so tempted to put glue in there. It's the last thing I want to do. Sort out those undercarriage legs first. So there we go. So what we can do now, we'll, we'll get in there and we'll get our David Union sander out in there and sand it all nice and flat and get it all flush, get it all lovely, and then we can mask it all off. Well, we can paint it and then we can mask it off and put the grey in there at a later date. It might be easier to do that now actually because you ain't going to get in there when all the fuselage and everything is in the way. So we shall see. 
I want to get a nice gloss coat in there, nice white gloss. And uh, so when we look up in, we look up in and we see these at the back in their glory. Right. I'll be back in a minute, but it's probably going to be two or three days for me. Right, so here we are. We're back a few hours later and hopefully all this glue has dried. I did actually put some super glue down in these seams down here. Uh, not the seam between the lower fuse large part, but between the these little fillets that went in. I just put some super glue in there just to fill the gaps and sort of bond it and everything. I wouldn't normally use super glue, but I know that it's actually welded with polystyrene cement either ends so you know it, it's it's going to be okay and then we're going to be gluing it all in here as well so um i'm figuring now it's time to remove all this tape this everywhere because the big risk of adding glue when we've got tape everywhere is the fact that you know if, if any of the glue gets anywhere near the tape it will capillary under and it will make a mess of your model so Best not to um, use tape near, well, not don't use glue anywhere near any tape. And you can see that is all staying put. That's all set nice and nice and hard. And uh, same here, get this out. We can remove these panels. Just like so, remember we're going to thin this down here because we're going to make it sit a bit deeper in. It was uh, sitting a little high, which is kind of the story with this kit. So they can go. So we've now got all this area here. So what we can do, we can put some super glue down in here. We can put some super glue down there. And I'm going to put super glue all around here and hopefully it's going to wick in. I'm not using it as a filler. I don't like using super glue as a, as a filler with... With plastic because it's much harder and when you sand it you end up with a, a raised lump um, unless you use a really coarse hard stick and I don't really want to be doing that and I'm sure there's a million of you out there that want to tell me that no you don't you do it well in my experience you do so there we go um, so what we're gonna do I'm gonna use my no-nonsense super glue if we're in the UK no nonsense super glue from Wix is uh, not from Wix from screw fix sorry is um it's great it's <laughs> I, I think it's absolutely awesome um i have other glues here here's some rocket rocket hot has the same lid and everything well it looks like the same lid but as soon as you use that the lid glues to itself and the lid hasn't glued onto this once so there you go it pays you money it takes your choice that's about a pound or something and that's about four pound so there we go. So I'm going to put some super glue in here and let it wick in. And I'm not sort of using it as a filler. I'm using it as a bonder. But hopefully it's going to kind of do both. But I don't want the super glue to be the total thing for the filling, if you know what I mean. Um, because as I say, it's a lot harder than the surrounding material and when you come to sand it you will find it very very difficult to blend it out some people put talcum powder in it which I have done in the past um, but in this area here I would rather be using softer fillers like Mr. Surfacer Tamiya filler Whatever, I would rather be using softer fillers because I don't want to be spending forever sanding. I know we have some steps. We do have some steps in this area. Now this one down in here, I'm not sure if you can see what I'm doing. I'll try and get it in the camera. Got quite a big gap there. And I was going to put plastic card in there, but um, decided not to because I thought it would all pull in. But after I'd glued it all in place, I realise that it doesn't all pull in. So there we go. And again, we'll be putting some filler down in there to fill the gap. I would rather be using plastic card, I must be honest. But uh, 
and there we are. So just go over the cotton bud and that will remove any excess on the surface. Because um, as I say, if you've got globules of super glue on the surface when you come to sand it, you'll, they'll, you'll see them. I can see it pulling off my loop at all and going in. I don't think I did this side, did I? Now remember, we've already put uh, Tammy Extra Thin in here. So we've got the weld action. And now what we're looking at is the locking action and the, the sort of base filling action of the super glue and that will allow us to um to get this all smoothed out so i think what we'll do next is give it a quick sand and see where the high and low spots are and everything and then we'll get in there with some filler and uh and start to attack okay so we've gone around now with the super glue and done all the joints and i've gone around with my infinity pe sander and sanded out lots of areas it's interesting to see that bulged area there look you can see on there, quite interesting. So, um, why is the screen so dark? I'll have to lighten it up when I edit. Um, but basically, yeah, we've got all the, the super glue in now and we can sand away and we can see where the high and low spots are. We can see what's going on. Uh, we have to be a little bit careful on these leading edges because this one here is very thin and this one here, I don't know if you can see it in the this one here comes down to a fairly sharp edge and this one here is like double the thickness so that needs some sanding and playing with but uh, be careful not to go too far uh, and obviously once we put these lower panels in here after we put the undercarriage in or before we put the undercarriage in whatever we'll have to do some work on that um, then, then we'll know where we're going with the whole thing so at the moment I'm just concentrating on the sides and the top I'm not going to worry about this panel in here because that's going to need a lot of work because we've got the jetcher pin marks and all sorts in that one but we can see how I'm sanding and what I've been careful of I mean the best thing to do is use a a pencil or a magic marker the trouble is with magic marker it will come back through the paint if you don't get it all off but uh, what I don't want to be doing is sanding away on this leading edge of this intake because I'm just going to thin it to paper thin so you can see I've sanded away there now do the same here you can see it's taking away that leading edge we've got a dip in there so we're going to get some filler in there so this is just Tamiya Putty basic type um, I would normally use car body filler but I'm just going to show you how this goes this is actually a bit dried out let's get the uh, the wet stuff through. What we're going to do is just add some in there, just like so. Push it into all the gaps, make sure it's got a good coverage, and then level it out. And then we'll get some more. We'll do this area over here and we can see that we've got a low area there where that black pen is and we know we've got a low area where the gaps are or where the seams are so we'll just push that in push that into there and then on the outer faces we're going to need quite a lot because we have this There we go, we have this, um, this tapering gap and I'm just going to push that filler in there and hopefully the, the super glue has sort of gone in, gone in, filled that gap and also acted like a base for the filler. So we're not just filling into a, a sort of, if you have an open gap and you just fill into it, then likely it will move and it will crack. So if you fill the gap with super glue first, or fill the gap with something first, 
then it won't all crack on you. So we're doing the same on this side. Some in there and we will add a bit more and smooth it out. And it's probably going to take a good sort of three or four applications. And I'm doing this now. It's actually, what time is it? It's actually 11 o'clock uh, on, what's the date today? The 6th of July. So it's 11 o'clock and no, I haven't been to the pub. I have been outside playing with bally games with Jess. But uh, I thought I'm going to get this in here now because I want to leave it for a good few hours before I start sanding it back. Because one of the things with this Tamiya putty, if you start sanding it too early, it just destroys your sanding sticks. It just clogs everything. And it's awful. But it is a very good filler because once it's uh, once it's gone on and it's sort of settled down and it's hard, it tends to sort of stay stable. It doesn't all sink back. So uh, that's why I'm using it. And there we go. So we've gone round and we filled in all those seam lines. We've got all this securely glued in place with super glue and all sorts. I may actually put some plastic packing in here, in these gaps, and glue it in there just to make that solid. Because uh, when we start pulling the back apart to do the spray in, then I want to make sure that it's, uh, it's all nice and strong, but we shall see. So, here we go. And this, this tube of Tamiya Putty is probably four years old. There's a date on it. But so I bought a load of it. Um, I bought loads of tubes back in God knows when. And, um, and I'm still using the same batch. And I think this is only about the third tube I've opened. But when you want to clean your spatulas, it's easy. Just get a cloth and just wipe it off. And if you get an issue with it sticking to your spatula, just get some extra thin or some Mr. Hobby Tool Cleaner. It's basically the same thing. You can wipe it off and there you go. All nice and clean. Right, so let's um, wait for that to dry and then start doing some sanding. Okay, so it's the next day and we've been doing some filling and sanding and everything. You'll also notice I've got this big clamp on here. Uh, I put some glue down in this area here, down in here, where the, this is the actually outer panel. That is not part of the inner uh, wall. This, the wall finishes here and then this is actually that outer panel. So I put some glue in there and I clamped it and let that dry overnight. So we can remove that now because that's going to be nice and solid. Um, you can see where I put the glue down in there, down in there, so the glue's all nice and solid. I've also put some super glue in here, in there, just to sort of give everything a bit more strength. Um, and then what we've done here, as you saw, I filled this and I've sanded it. Uh, I was using this stick at one point because these things available from supermarkets, they're great for getting into corners. But what I found is really a floury skinny stick uh, for the roughing out of everything. And uh, this is the blue one, which is probably a little bit too coarse. And then, but really, I think the best thing for this is these Infini PE sticks because they're nice and hard and they're flat and they will stay flat and they won't curve up on you. Or the thing is, with these, they're absolutely wonderful, but they will curl up on you. And when they do curl up on you, they get this you can see this raised area, you can see there by my thumb. You get that raised area that's not knocking floury skinny sticks at all. I think they're absolutely brilliant. Um, but that's just because that's the way it is, you know, it's, it's how it is. It's, um, that's why fiberglass delaminates, because if you have a certain thickness, when you bend it, this side has to stretch and this side has to shrink. Or this side just rips open and this side is the pivot. So 
there we go but um i'm gonna have to replace the uh the uh, the uh, abrasives on these i think because it's getting a bit worn out but we can see in here we've got it all blended out and we've gone over with mr surfacer and we can see there where it's where the filler has shrunk under the mr surfacer i don't know if you can see that but there is a, a line there so that's the whole thing for using mr surfacer so we can smooth all this out now get it all sanded smooth and then we can start looking at getting some paint on there now obviously you don't want to watch me doing all this sanding so i'm going to do this off camera and then the next thing we're going to do is get some primer on it but before we do that we're going to have to look at getting some blocks on here to support our undercarriage get this all glued together get all those seams dealt with and mainly get this seam inside dealt with because there's quite a step in there there's quite a little step in there well it's not as bad as i thought it was actually but there is a, a bloody ejector pin mark on there. I don't know if I can sand it and make it visible. But there is an ejector pin mark there in that corner. So uh, we'll also have to get rid of that. So what we'll do is get all this done nicely and then we'll deal with that down there separately. There's also a seat mark along there which we'll have to deal with as well because that doesn't look very nice. So... We are moving on and we will get this sanded out smooth and then we'll look at getting all this done and then we'll cut this off and get the back off and everything. That's probably going to be in the next part now because we're, what are we into now? An hour and 10 minutes or something? Hour and 20 minutes. So I'll get this sanded smooth and then I'll come back and show you what it looks like. So we've sanded out all this now. It's all blended out. It's all nice and smooth. And what we'll do when, we, when we've done this lower edge, we'll get some primer in there and see how it looks. We'll use grey primer. Um, don't use white primer. It won't show up any marks. Black primer is a little bit difficult to cover up, so we'll use grey primer, and then if we've got any marks still there, then we'll see them. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So, as you can see, I fitted the undercarriage legs. I've just had a look, had a look through the side and made sure that the legs are sort of both the same. They're not one, you know, not, not one like this or one like this sort of thing. And they're both, as you can see, they're both parallel. So that's cool. Um, and what we've got to do now is, obviously, when we... Put weight on the aircraft it pushes down on here and what it's going to do is try and lift that brass rod as you can see it's lifting that brass rod as i push it back so what we need to do is wedge it up now what i could do is put some blocks in here now and glue it in solid that would mean having that leg sticking out all the time for the whole build which is not going to be good so what i'm thinking is i can measure the distance between that leg and the bottom of this panel pack out this panel with some plastic card of, this, of the right thickness and then I can fit this in place, get it all solid without the undercarriage there and then be able to fit the undercarriage in afterwards. And that is basically what we're going to try. So first of all, what I'm going to do is get a bit of blue tack, just get a little, lob, little ball of blue tack and I'm going to put it on the bottom of here in roughly the right place, which is about there. Okay, and then I'm going to fit this panel into place and then push it down okay and if we lift it away we should be able to measure with our calipers the thickness through there and it's something like 3.7 if i measure the thickness of the plastic there that's 1.1 so we're looking at about 2.6 2.7 millimeters block and I'd rather have it too thick and sand it back to fit rather than not know if it's any good. So we're looking at about a 2.7 millimeter block. The other thing I've done, I forgot to say, is if you remember when I said I put these panels in originally, they were sitting up high on the back edge. So I've come along with a knife and very carefully just got in and just scraped material from that step on both sides. And I've also done it down the sides here. Okay, and that allows that panel to sit in a lot nicer than it did before. Okay, so it's nice and flush now, so we won't be sanding away all this detail to get it all blended in. So that was the uh, that was the objective there. So you can see now we've got those panels fitted in there and they fit beautifully. They're a really nice fit. So a little bit of Mr. Service is going to be needed in there where I've got this one a little bit canted off. Uh, so that's, that's my mistake. Um, but um, there we go. The only thing I could do, of course, is just remove 
some plastic from the back of there, just on one side only. And see if I can make it go back a touch and close that gap up there. But uh, there we are. So, right, what are we going to do now? Let's get some plastic glued onto here for these blocks. But that's going to be in part four because this has been going for nearly an hour and a half now. And that's enough for any man to not fall asleep. So wake up! Wake up! Right. Uh, and uh, yeah, I've got to go and have a shower now and then pop off to hospital and have my x-ray done on my hand. So uh, I will see you all soon for part four. Um, and in part four, what we'll do is get these blocks glued on, get these fitted, check that we can get our undercarriage in and out, and then do all the blending and the sanding and start working on these intakes. And then we'll cut the body off, get the belly back, get all the rubber bands off, pull these sides out so they're sitting out like this, and then we can start looking at painting our intakes. So I'll see you all for part four. I hope you're enjoying this. And like I say, if you are fairly new to the hobby, if you follow me step by step, just give it a go. I mean, just think of it. At the end of the day, you've got two options here. You can end up with a model. You can say, mm, it's all right. Lots of filler. Mm, I don't know. Or you can end up with, say, I followed Nigel and look at what I've got. Now, I'm not saying this is going to be a complete build. This is going to be a build of the airframe. We're going to check it all goes together. Um, but uh, we shall see how we get on. But I might, like, we can, you can see it's just going to be lovely. So um, stick with me and... Uh, Give it a go. And it's a cheap kit at the end of the day to do it on as well. I couldn't leave you there, could I? I couldn't leave you hanging. So, <laughs> here we go. Here we go. As soon as the camera on, dog starts barking. It's the same every time. <laughs> I think now Jess is going to have a go. So, basically, we've got the undercarriage in there, and I've got the blocks on the back. And I think Aww. they are... Because I sanded some off. 2.9. So, that's roughly, that's roughly uh, 1.9 millimetres. 1.9 millimeters there in thickness because I was measuring back here and the thing is because it's all on an angle so basically it's at the point we need to get the right uh, the right angle so what I've done to test it is put that on there like that and then move the undercarriage leg and as you can see as I move the undercarriage leg just put my finger on that pivot as I move the leg it lifts that so if I hold that down the leg is solid if I don't hold it down the leg can move so um that's what we're going to do. So it's going to have to be glued in really well, this piece. It has to be glued in very well indeed. Um, I'm sort of half tempted to put a block across here to really get some glue into that and really get it stuck down because otherwise it's just going to split the joint, I think. Although we'll have the leg glued in here as well. Um, maybe it would be best to remove this part, the undercarriage leg, just glue all this together and glue that in first. I, I don't know. But... Um, I think we'll go for the first option because having those legs there all the time is going to be a right pain in the ass and they'll probably only get snapped off. So uh, I think what I'll do is put a block across there so I can increase the glue area rather than just have it on these little thin flanges and uh, go from there. But, um, there we go guys. So I think I'll glue a block across there and then I'll come back. And there we go. Plastic scrap glued in there. And what I'm doing is I've just got locked up so that it's just also supporting that brass rod. So the brass is supported now at both ends. So it's not the plastic leg that's doing all the work on the pivoting side of things. So as we can see, if I put this on here, as I showed you just now, hold the back of the leg in place. And it's all solid. If I move it, it moves that panel out of the way. There we go. So we're ready now to glue that in. So what we can do, what I want to do, is get these legs out because I don't want them in there when I'm splashing the glue about and then I'm going to get super glue neat from the bottle and place it on here and the reason I'm using super glue is it will build up. There we go, so I can hold that in place now. Hold that down. And that's firmly fixed in place at the back. And then we can glue the rest with a weld action glue. Do 
do the same on this one. I don't want any glue oozing out. Wipe that off. I think I had some glue on the back of there then. Already we've got some glue there, never mind. So we'll push that down in, make sure that's all got done in properly. Grab a cotton bud and soak off that glue off the top. I don't want in that, that in there filling up any panel lines or anything. There we go. That's that one in. So they're both in, so now the front ends can get the uh, the plastic welding treatment get it all clamped into place and all taped in nice and solid and I think we're going to have to put up with um, some oozage on this because it needs to be kind of pulled into place around everything so what I do want to do is get some glue in behind there because on the bottom of the bottom of the intake this the, the part here I want that glue to it there, so I don't want to have it. I can get some in there now, like that, and then push it down on. And there we go. And I think what I'm going to try and do is see if I can clamp this. This way. Nah. I think what we're going to have to do is use rubber bands or tape or something, probably tape, to hold it into place. What I might do is put a drop of super glue in there to lock it into place. This is one for Emma if she's watching. She's always asked, well she has asked about this. Where well, I use super glue and ordinary glue. The reason I use super glue at the back is because there may be a little gap there and the super glue will fill up the gap. I'm going to get a cigarette lighter and take off this excess glue on here. There we go. That's how you clean your glue loopers. And then I'm going to grab a drop of super glue, push it into that gap, and then push all this together and hold it. And hopefully, that will hold that in place. And then what I can do is come in with plastic, well, no, plastic welding glue all the way around. So we won't be relying on super glue for the strength. It's only there, it's acting like a clamp to hold it in place while the rest of the glue dries. Okay, so that's in there now. So now we can come along with our... In fact, I'm going to use extra thin for the smaller brush. We can let that wick into there. Plenty in there, but a nice strong joint, and there's quite a big flange behind there. So, like I say, we're probably going to have to put up with some oozing here. What we'll do is we'll let it go off for a few seconds so that it becomes like a gooey mess. Like I've allowed that back to lift a bit while I clamp the front. So what's happened is it's lifted and the super glue's gone off. So I'm now into the state of having to sand that corner in. That's not too much of an issue. It's just that joint there you can see where I'm pointing. 
Just that corner there. So there we go. So now we've got that all held in and all glued up and glue oozing out. We can get some tape. And there, pull it down. And that'll hold that when it goes off. And then this area in here, there really is nothing to clamp. So what I'm going to do there is put some super glue in here first. Always put the super glue in first, guys, otherwise what happens is the plastic cement will get onto the plastic, turn it into a gooey mess, and then you're trying to stick a gooey mess with super glue, and that's not going to work. What I'm doing here is just putting this super glue in here because it will act as not only an adhesive but a filler as well. So we're not just putting filler or Mr. Surface or whatever into a hollow, great big gap. There we go. And then we can get some extra thin touch that in there and that capillary around that joint. You can see it all coming out. There's a great big flange under there. I'm just gonna wipe that away quickly with a cotton bud. And then we give it a few seconds, let that glue turn into a bit of a gunge rather than a wet glue so it doesn't wick under the tape. And then I can get some tape. Got it all today, we've got dogs, kids and seagulls. And tape over the top. And let that all hold together while the glue goes off. You can see now, and what I can do actually is come in maybe with this one, maybe get some glue into that joint. I can certainly get some into the ends because yeah, we're going to be sanding and everything in there anyway. As I say, we've got that bloody wet ejector pin mark on there as well. There we are. So we can leave that now to dry. I'm going to leave it for a couple of days because all that glue around there will still be all wet and gungy and there's no point trying to fill in the sand where you've got wet glue. So I'll do the same on the other side and that'll be it. So that really is it now for part uh, part three and I will see you all very soon for part four. Right, this is goodbye properly now. Bye for now. <laughs>